main theaters within the 13 states, and a smaller but strategically important one in the west of the Appalachian Mountains. Fighting began in the Northern Theater and was at its most severe from 1775 to 1778. The Patriots achieved several strategic victories in the South and after defeating a British army at Saratoga in October 1777, the French formally entered Thea as an American ally. 81. During 1778, Washington prevented the British Army breaking out of New York City, while militia under George Rogers Clark supported by Francophone settlers and their Indian allies conquered Western Quebec which became the Northwest Territory. With the war in the North stalemate, in 1779 the British initiated the Southern Strategy, which aimed to mobilize Loyalist support in the region and reoccupy Patriot-controlled territory north to Chesapeake Bay. The campaign was initially successful, with the British capture of Charleston being a major setback for Southern Patriots. However, a Franco-American forces arounded a British army at Yorktown and their surrender in October, 1781 effectively ended fighting in North America. 76. Early Engagements A bird's-eye view of a long column of British soldiers marching by regiment along a road just outside of Boston. British troops leave Boston, prior to the Battle of Lexington and Concord April 19. 1775 on the 14th of April, 1775, Sir Thomas Gage, Commander-in-Chief, North America since 1763 and also Governor of Massachusetts from 1774, received orders to take action against the Patriots. He decided to destroy militia ordnance stored at Concord, Massachusetts and capture John Hancock and Samuel Adams, who were considered her principal instigators of the rebellion. The operation was to begin around midnight on the 19th of April, in the hope of completing it before the Patriots could respond. 82, 83, however, Paul Revere learned of plan and notified Captain Parker, commander of the Concord militia, who prepared to resist the attempted seizure. 84. The first auction of the war was commonly referred to as the shot heard round the world involved a brief skirmish at Lexington, followed by a full-scale battle during the battles of Lexington and Concord. British troops suffered around 300 casualties before withdrawing to Boston, which was then besieged with militia. 85. In May, 4,500 British reinforcements arrived under Generals William Howe. John Burgoyne, and Sir Henry Clinton. 86. On the 17th of June, they seized the Charlestown Peninsula at the Battle of Bunker Hill, a frontal assault in which they suffered over 1,000 casualties. 87. Dismayed at the costly attack which had gained them little. 88. Gage appealed to London for a larger army to suppress the revolt. 89. But instead was replaced as commander by Howe. 87. On the 14th of June, 1775, Congress took control of Patriot forces outside Boston, and Congressional leader John Adams nominated George Washington as commander-in-chief of the new Continental Army. 90. Washington previously commanded Virginia militia regiments in the French and Indian War. 91. And on June 16, John Hancock officially proclaimed him General and Commander-in-Chief of the Army of the United Colonies. 92. He assumed command on July 3, preferring to fortify Dorchester Heights outside Boston rather than assaulting it. 93. In early March, 1776, Colonel Henry Knox arrived with heavy artillery required in the capture of Fort Tickendragar. 94. Under cover of darkness, on March the 5th, Washington placed Hus on Dorchester Heights, 95, from where they could fire on the town and British ships in Boston Harbor. Fearing another Bunker Hill, Howe evacuated the city on the 17th of March without further loss and sailed to Halifax, Nova Scotia, 
while Washington moved south to New York City. 96. Beginning in August 1775, American privateers raided towns in Nova Scotia, including St. John Charlotte Tone and Yarmouth. In 1776, John Paul Jones and Jonathan Eddy attacked Canso and Fort Cumberland respectively. British officials in Quebec began negotiating with the Iroquois for their support, 97, while U.S. envoys urged them to remain neutral. 98, aware of Native American leanings toward the British and fearing an Anglo-Indian attack from Canada, Congress authorized a second invasion in April 1775. 99, after defeat at the Battle of Quebec on December 31, 100. The Americans maintained a loose blockade of the city until they retreated on May the 6th. 1776. 101. A second defeat at Trois Rivières on June 8 ended. Operations in Quebec. 102. British pursuit was initially blocked by American naval vessels on Lake Champlain until victory at Balco Island on the 11th of October forced the Americans to withdraw to Fort Ticonderoga, while in December a new prizing in Nova Scotia sponsored by Massachusetts was defeated at Fort Cumberland. 103. These failures. Snow-covered street fighting of British and Tory provincials repulsing an American assault. British regulars and provincial militia pulse an American attack on Quebec. December 1775 impacted public support for the Patriot cause, 104, and aggressive anti-loyalist policies in the New England colonies alienated the Canadians. 105, in Virginia. An attempt by Governor Lord Dunmore to seize militia stores on the 20th of April, 1775, led to an increase in tension. Old Howth conflict was avoided for the time being. 106. This changed after the publication of Dunmore's proclamation on November the 7th, 1775, promising freedom to any slaves who fled their patriot masters and agreed to fight for the crown. 107. British forces were defeated at Great Bridge on December the 9th and took refuge on British ships armed near the port of Norfolk. When the Third Virginia Convention refused to disband its militia or accept martial law Dunmore ordered the burning of Norfolk on January the 1st, 1776. 108. Continental Sergeant Jasper of the 2nd South Carolina Regiment, on a parapet raising the Fort's South Carolina Revolutionary Flag with its white crescent moon. Sergeant Jasper raising the Fort's Flag Battle of Sullivan's Island, June 1776. The Siege of Savage's Old Fields began on the 19th of November in South Carolina between Loyalist and Patriot militias. 109, and the Loyalists were subsequently driven out of the colony in the Snow Campaign. 110, Loyalists were recruited in North Carolina Tory assert British rule in the South, but they were decisively defeated in the Battle of Moores Creek Bridge. 111, a British expedition sent to reconquer South Carolina launched an Attack on Charleston in the Battle of Sullivan's Island on the 28th of June, 1776, 112, but it failed and left the South under Patriot control until 1780. 113. A shortage of gunpowder led Congress to authorize a naval expedition against the Bahamas to secure ordnance stored. 114. On the 3rd of March, 1776, an American squadron under the command of Isaac Hopkins landed at the east end of Nassau and encountered minimal resistance at Fort Montague. Hopkins' troops then marched on Fort Nassau. Hopkins had promised Governor Montford Brown and the civilian inhabitants of the area that their lives and property would not be in any danger if they offered no resistance to which they complied. 
Hopkins captured large stores of powder and other munitions that was so great he had to impress an extra ship in the harbor to transport the supplies back home. When he departed on March 17.115, a month later, after a brief skirmish with HMS Glasgow, Thayer turned to New London, Connecticut, the base for American naval operations during the Revolution. 116. British New York Counter-Offensive After regrouping at Halifax, Nova Scotia, William Howe was determined to take the fight to the Americans. 117. He sailed for New York in June 1776 and began landing troops on Staten Island near the entrance to New York Harbor on July 2. The Americans rejected Howe's informal attempt to negotiate EPS on July 30 winking sad smiley 118. Washington knew that an attack on the city was imminent and realized that he needed advance information to deal with disciplined British regular troops. On the 12th of August, 1776, Patriot Thomas Knowlton was given orders to form an elite group for reconnaissance and secret missions. Knowlton's Rangers, which included Nathan Hale, became the Army's first intelligence unit. 119. W. When Washington was driven off Long Island he soon realized that he would need more than military might and amateur spies to defeat the British. He was committed to professionalizing military intelligence, and with aid of Benjamin Tormich, they launched the six-man Culper spy ring. 122. X. The efforts of Washington and the Culper spy ring substantially increased effective allocation and deployment of Continental regiments in the field. 122. Over the course of the war Washington spent more than 10% half his total military funds on intelligence operations. 123. Continental infantry firing a volley kneeling behind a stone wall, their captain standing with a sword. Their flag has a dark green field with a canton of 13 alternating red and white stripes. An American company online, Battley of Long Island, August 1776 Washington split his army into positions on Manhattan Island and across the East River in western Long Island. 124. On the 27th of August at the Battle of Long Island, Howe outflanked Washington and foreseed him back to Brooklyn Heights, but he did not attempt to encircle Washington's forces. 125. Through the night of the 28th of August, General Henry Knox bombarded the British. Knowing they were up against overwhelming odds, Washington ordered the assembly of a war council on the 29th of August. All agreed to retreat to Manhattan. Washington quickly had his troops assembled and ferried them across the East River to Manhattan on flat-bottomed freight boats without any losses in men or ordnance, leaving General Thomas Mifflin's regiments as a rearguard. 126. General Howe officially met with a delegation from Congress at the September Staten Island Peace Conference, but it failed to conclude peace as the British delegates only had the authority to offer pardons and could not recognize independence. 127. On the 15th of September, Howe seized control of New York City when the British landed at Kipps Bay and unsuccessfully engaged the Americans at the Battle of Harlem Heights the following day. 128. On the 18th of October Howe failed to encircle the Americans at the Battle of Pelles Point, and the Americans withdrew. Howe declined to close with Washington's army on the 28th of October at the Battle of White Plains and instead attacked a hill that was of no strategic value. 129. Sailing ships on the Hudson River from afar. The scene emphasizes the two tall bluffs overlooking either side of the Hudson Narrows. British forced Hudson River Narrows to isolate Fort Washington November 1776 Washington's retreat isolated his remaining forces and the British captured Fort Washington on the 16th of November. 
the British victory amounted to Washington's most disastrous defeat with the loss of 3,000 prisoners. 130. The remaining American regiments on Long Island fell back four days later. 131. General Sir Henry Clinton wanted to pursue Washington's disorganized army, but he was first required to commit 6,000 troops to capture Newport, Rhode Island to secure the Loyalist port. 132. Why? General Charles Cornwallis pursued Washington, but Howe ordered him to halt leaving Washington unmolested. 134. The outlook was bleak for the American cause. The reduced army had dwindled to fewer than 5,000 men and would be reduced further when enlistments expired at the end of the year. 135. Popular support wavered, morale declined, and Congress abandoned Philadelphia and moved to Baltimore. 136. Loyalist activity surged in the wake of the American defeat, especially in New York State. 137. In London, news of the victorious Long Island campaign was well received with festivities held in the capital. Public support reached a peak, 138, and King George III awarded the Order of the Bath to Howe. 139. Strategic deficiencies among Patriot forces were evident. Washington divided a numerically weaker army in the face of a stronger one. His inexperienced staff misread the military situation, and American troops fled in the face of enemy fire. The successes led to predictions that the British could win within a year. 140. In the meantime, the British established winter quarters in the New York City area and anticipated renewed campaigning the following spring. 141. Patriot Resurgence. Washington standing up in a freight boat crossing a windy river filled with winter chunks of ice. Iconic 1851 painting of Washington crossing Delaware two weeks after Congress withdrew to Maryland. Washington crossed the Delaware River about 30 miles upriver from Philadelphia on the night of the 25th of December, 1926, 1776. Meanwhile, the Hessians were involved with numerous clashes with small bands of patriots and were often aroused by false alarms at night in the weeks before the actual Battle of Trenton. By Christmas they were tired and weary, while a heavy snowstorm led their commander, Colonel Johann Rao, to assume no attack of any consequence would occur. 142. At daybreak on the 26th, the American patriots surprised and overwhelmed Rao and his troops, who lost over 20 killed including Rao, 143, while 900 prisoners, German cannons and much supply were captured. 144. The Battle of Trenton restored the American army's morale, reinvigorated the patriot cause, 145, and dispelled their fear of the what they regarded as Hessian mercenaries. 146. A British attempt to retake Trenton was repulsed at a Sunpink Creek on January 2, winking sad smiley. 147. During the night, Washington outmaneuvered Cornwallis, then defeated his rearguard in the Battle of Princeton the following day. The two victory helped convince the French that the Americans were worthy military allies. 148. After his success at Princeton, Washington entered winter quarters at Morristown, New Jersey, where he remained until May. 149. And he received the congressional direction to inoculate all Patriot troops against smallpox. 150. Z. With the exception of a minor skirmishing between the two armies which continued until March. 152. Howe made no attempt to attack the Americans. 153. British Northern Strategy Fails. Saratoga Campaign Maneuver. And, inset, 
The Battles of Saratoga Sea, October 1777. The 1776 campaign demonstrated regaining New England would be a prolonged affair, which led to a change in British strategy. Thighs involved isolating the North from the rest of the country by taking control.